Welcome to another edition of Small Business Review. I'm Ernest Everett Lacey, your host. We have as our guest today, Troy Allen, Director of Community Based Day Services. He's to my immediate left and to my extreme left, Stephanie Potter, Director of Service Community Employment Services. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Mr. Lacey. Thanks we for appreciate having us. you having us Great. here. Absolutely. <laughs> Service has been in Tennessee for 53 years. Yes, sir. That's a long time. Yes, sir, it is. And plenty of time to get roots, establish your roots, I should say. And how long have you been around, uh, Troy? I've been with Service for 27 years. 27 years. Yes, sir. Boy, that's, mm. And Stephanie, as we were saying before we went on air, a little over a year and a half. Yes, no, only a year and a half, but been doing this quite a while. So I'm proud to be at SERVS. You've got to like what you do, Troy. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. When I first came to SERVS, I just moved back from the D.C. area, and I took a job at SERVS thinking I'd be there for a couple months until I found the job I wanted. But within those couple months, I fell in love with the work we do, and I committed to staying for 27 years, and I plan on retiring from SERVS. Mm -hmm. Now, um... The mission. Uh, first of all, for the people who don't know, serves as a nonprofit United Way uh, member agency, and they are the family answer for disabilities. So, both of you guys jump in whatever you want. There's something in terms of of, of liking the job. You've got to have a special love for people with disabilities. You got to. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And it's all and about the people. You couldn't yes, even sir. be there a year and a half if you didn't. That's true. <laughs> right. And it's all about the people. Once when I started working with Serves, I fell in love with the people that we support. Yeah. They are loving. They are kind. They are eager to get out and find jobs and be employed. They want to be part of their community. So all those things drew me in, and I'm committed. I'll be there. Okay. They just have so much to offer. Uh, I think a lot of people discount them and think that maybe they don't have something to offer, but they do. They tell really me about do. some of the things that Serves offers. Yeah. Just tell me about some of them. I mean, just you know, off just off the top of your head, any of them. You know, employment placement. Uh, you want to jump into that uh, right off? Of, how does that work? Yes, yeah, sir. We we Off love talk about uh, yeah, talk absolutely. about employment. That's that's where our heart is right now yes. and where our focus is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, someone is watching this show, or could be several people are watching the show, and they probably have family members that have some sort of a disability. Is there age? Is there an age restriction? No, sir. Absolutely not. In any age? No, sir. All people can work. If they like to work and they're interested in being employed in the community, we have a community services program where we'll go out and help people find jobs. And that's a big part of what we do. So we're fully committed and believe that all people can work. It's just a matter of finding them the right opportunity, the right partnership, and then they'll go forth and be productive. Okay. What about training? Do you train them? Yes, sir, we do. You got to train yeah, we, one, one of our um, big programs that we worked with through the closure of our workshop is our soft skills training. Mm -hmm. And Troy helped put that together, and his staff actually worked with the individuals to put them through this training that would help them to learn all of those skills that you need to be successful in work. Mm -hmm. Things like showing up to work on time, how to work with coworkers, how to take supervision, um, how to... Uh, dress appropriately, how to interview appropriately, all of those things so that they can be successful. Right. One of the things we were committed to doing is that we had people who had been in our workshop for anywhere from 20 to 50 years. And with those folks having been there so long, we didn't want to just put them out in the community and say go out and do something positive and be productive. We wanted to prepare them. So we created our own soft skills curriculum so that we can make sure they had those skills that were needed so they could go out and be productive, be successful, and we support them along the way. These people also, they have jobs. Where, where are they working? 
Any names, companies, and <laughs> tell us where they're working right now? Well, yes, sir. Sure, yeah, they're working. Uh, one of our big companies that we're working with is AutoZone. Okay. They have a large fulfillment center here in town, okay. and they have really been impressed with the individuals that we have sent to them. And okay. they have actually created very specific positions for some of those individuals that, is great. that have that's helped super. them to meet their production goals. Yeah, that's super. Home based company, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it doesn't get any better than that. AutoZone, we have taken them with us to Nashville. They have met the governor recently, and two of their employees came to meet the governor. They have just really taken this on um, as, as a mission for them, too, to employ right. people with disabilities, right. and they're great advocates. Right. AutoZone basically told us when they first hired the people from our workshop, they were hopeful that they'd get great employees, but within a few weeks, they realized they had outstanding employees, and they then decided that they would hire more people with disabilities. In fact, AutoZone has rebranded the concept. They say instead of hiring people with disabilities based on their experience with our folks, they're hiring people with abilities. And that's key to educating the community about what service has to offer and the people we support, what they can contribute to the workforce. Mm -hmm. that's, that's beautiful. Any other companies? Oh, yes, sir. Any other company other than AutoZone? Oh yeah, we work with um, probably 50 or 60 different businesses okay. in town. Uh, one of the ones we've wor wor been working with re uh, recently is Region 1 Health Center okay. downtown. So we have uh, some individuals that have started working in the hospital. Mm -hmm. We have individuals working in different warehouses. Uh, American Stairwell is one that we have several individuals working there. Uh, That's what I was trying to pull out of you two guys. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Not, not so much uh, who they're working for, where are they working, the different mm -hmm. kinds of, of labor right. that's involved, mm -hmm. you know, so there's a variety. So we, we're not yeah. just talking about um, one line of work here. Right. We're talking about multitudes of, of lines of work. Exactly. That uh, they have been tagged with that label of being disabled, but they are able. Right. Because they are working. And, and we specifically offer customized employment services, which means that we don't just go out and take a person and give them any job. We find the job where they're best suited, they're pref they prefer to be what they'd like to do. We put them in an environment so that they will be successful. One example of that is that we have a young man and his desire, his dream, was to work at Crystal's Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Now, that was something that we told him, well, don't get fixed on one restaurant. Let's see what all we can find, what options we we have for you but he was said no I want to work at Crystal's restaurant and we were successful just a couple months ago in finding him a job at the Crystal's restaurant there on Union Avenue he's doing an outstanding job he loves it his family's happy the manager at Crystal's is completely thrilled about his performance so we do offer those customized services so we make sure we have a good job match well that's great no, that's great you know I love to hear that you're not just bringing people in and putting them on a assembly line and, hey, this right. one drops off here, so we're going to stick him over here. Right. This one drops off here, we're going to stick her over there. Right. You know, mm -hmm. you're being very, very specialized, and that individual is happy. I'm sure they are. Oh, absolutely. The company is happy. Right. You know, because I, I always, I try to tell people all the time, you know, companies only hire you for, for two reasons. Not because you look good. <laughs> they want to see, can you make me some money or can you save me some money? If you can't do neither one of those things, I really don't need you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And right. evidently, they're doing both. <laughs> Saving and helping themselves too. Exactly Three right. Things. And also when we have businesses that hire out people and support our mission and vision, then we find that the families of the people we support then start to patronize that business even more. So that's the community impact of you hiring a person with a disability is that you get that full circle of support that now patronizes and supports the business in question. And that's just a win-win situation for all involved. Now that's one aspect I hadn't thought about. Yes, sir. But I'm glad you brought it up, Troy, because uh, businesses need to know that. Yes, they sir. also need to know <clears throat> that there are advantages from a tax point of view. Mm -hmm. Yes. Check what all, all of the individuals that we serve, that we help get placed at different employers, all of those employers are eligible for a, a tax break. Mm -hmm. um, for hiring those individuals. It depends on how many hours they're working and things, but that is, is a, definitely a benefit yeah. for, the, for the employers. And see, companies, companies need to know this because they are, everybody's looking for some type of uh, a tax break, so not necessarily just to focus on the tax break, 
But like you said, Troy, it's a win-win situation all the way around. You know, yeah. it helps you financially in the business. Um, people see uh, these individuals working in, in, in that business. The family sees them. The family starts to patronize that business. Mm -hmm. You can't beat it with a stick. Absolutely. We've really seen that uh, with Walgreens. Walgreens is a company nationally that has uh, been hiring people with disabilities for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and here locally, they have hired individuals as well as they actually created a training program for individuals to go through. It's a month-long training program. They call it the Ready Program. Mm -hmm. It's the Retail Employees with Disabilities Initiative. And the employees go through a month-long training where they learn all of the things that they would need to be successful in a retail environment. And so at the end of the training, they're eligible, if they successfully complete it, they're eligible for hiring, get, getting hired at Walgreens. And since that training and, and since Walgreens has done such a great job with showing everyone, all the people that they have hired, Everybody I know only goes to Walgreens. <laughs> it's a good thing they're on every corner, but uh, I would never step foot in another drugstore now because I know that Walgreens like stands behind yeah. sure. our people. Now, I would imagine <clears throat> um, the um, people that come through your program, there has to be a test involved that they have to go through, and they've got to pass this test or something. <laughs> before you say that now you're ready to go out and conquer the world <laughs> you 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 meet you you met our expectations now it's time to find that that perfect niche uh, niche for you Am I on track here, Troy? Well, what we actually do is we do provide quite a bit of support and training to make sure that they are completely prepared to go out. And they will be able to demonstrate to us that they have the skills needed for a particular job. Mm -hmm. So once we put them out there, we want to make sure that we've done all the background work to make sure that we are sure that this is the right person, this is the right fit, and that they'll go in and be successful. So we don't necessarily test them, but we do educate them and prepare them for those community placements. That's great. Yes, sir. That's great. The biggest thing for me is motivation. Mm -hmm. I need to see that people are motivated to work. Sure. And so that's kind of more like what we're testing for is let's see how motivated you are. Are you going to get up on early and get to work on time? Are you going to figure out how to get to work? You know, are you going to have a backup plan? How motivated are you to work? Um, our individuals can be taught a lot of skills. So they don't have to necessarily come with all of the skills, but they have to come with the motivation to work. And one unique part of what we do is also we involve their family and their support structure because a person can have a great job, but if they're depending on mom or dad or sister or brother to get them there and the family member is unwilling or unable to do that, then that's going to lead to a failed situation. So our goal is to make sure that we look at the entire surroundings, all of their support structure. So again, we're looking to make sure that we have a placement that's going to be successful. Mm. You know what I was thinking about here, just sitting here thinking about this as you were giving out this information. Can you imagine, just, just, just imagine what it would cost a company if they had to do that with every employee or prospect, prospective employee that they hired. Oh, absolutely. Because what, what you have actually done, you have, you have done all the work. <laughs> <laughs> you have literally done all the work. <clears throat> you basically, excuse me, you basically telling this company, hey, look, here's an employee for you. They're going to come to work on time. We know about their attitude. They're motivated. They want to do this. This is the job they, they wanted, they've dreamed about. I mean, yes, sir. it doesn't get any better than that. And you're absolutely it does right. Actually, get better than that. <laughs> well, hey, because go ahead and put the cream on the, the cake. Once the individual <laughs> becomes employed, and during that training period that anybody has when they first start a job, we provide on-site support for that individual for as long as they need to make sure that they are trained appropriately, that they know that they get up to speed on uh, the production that you know whatever they're trying to do, and our 
our staff are there to make sure that the employer has that support as well so that they have somebody they can call if something's going wrong or somebody needs a little extra help or time learning something our staff are there which can really save companies and training costs absolutely oh, yeah and another very specific benefit to hiring the people we support is that we have it serves a 95 percent retention rate for the people we put on jobs so once they go out and start working they are more than likely going to be there for many many years to come employers are burdened with the cost of the hiring process the hiring firing retraining going through all that Turn is over. very expensive very expensive sure. so when we reduce that and say that there's a 95 percent likelihood that the person we give you will be here for many years to come that's a savings and that's a benefit all the way around no no question about it. No question about it. Because you know, a lot of times we look at the we look at the firing process. I look at the worst scenario, which is a firing process. And sometimes we think, well, you know, be, no big deal. You know, you get fired. You get, you know, I fired a person. Fired a person. Hey, it, it's costly it's cost. because you train that person. Absolutely. You 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 spent resources training that person. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But now you get someone that comes through that through that service program. It's a whole different ball of wax. Exactly right. Because when, when they get ready to hire that person, they know right up front that there's only a 5% chance that I'll ever have to fire this person. Absolutely. Yeah. That's almost that's almost slim to none. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And we also go back out and do the retraining. I think Stephanie referenced earlier that in the event that a person is doing a job and that job becomes obsolete or some changes are needed, we'll go back in to retrain the people that we place there to make sure that they have the new skills, that they understand the new requirements, and that adds to that retention rate. So that's the ongoing support that we offer. Yeah, because um, you know, being repetitive. With, with good examples, just reinfo it's, it's reinforcing what you, you've taught them in the first place. Yes, sir. It's, it's a reinforcement process that, that you're going, going through there. Yes, sir. I, you know what, I, I can't understand why any, the phone, the lines, <laughs> the telephone should be just jumping off the hook over there at the office. It should be. I mean, you ought to have people lined up looking for folks and you're trying to find people to fill fill jobs. Because I mean this I mean this 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 is great. Yes, sir. thank you. Well I think that's and, why we're here. We're trying, yeah, to, trying I mean, to spread the word. A lot of employers just don't know mean, about uh, the services. It, it, uh, and the employee doesn't uh, he doesn't have any costs here at right. all. Right. Well we're here and ready. We want the employer community to know that you can reach out to serves we have a pool of people who are ready to go right now who would love to come in and add value to your organization they just need the opportunity and serves is going to be there to support them through the full term of their employment yeah and we want people at home to know if you have an individual in your family mm -hmm. and you don't think there's anything for them to do you think it's a waste of time you're wrong mm -hmm. pick up the phone call serves Sorry. They yes, can sir. do a lot more <laughs> for that individual sitting there. Yes, sir. Because life has a purpose, and you guys are making sure that they fulfill that they fulfill that person's that purpose. Because all of them, all of them, I'm sure they want a job. Absolutely. They don't want anybody getting giving them anything. Exactly right. I bet you if you offer them a piece of candy, they probably they probably throw it back at you, <laughs> and I wouldn't blame them. Right. They're very independent, and that's part of what we want to promote is that level of independence. And also, by people with disabilities going to work, then it also has a direct impact on the benefits that they might have or the social resources that they may be consuming. So that person going back to work can ultimately lead to a lower tax rate for a lot of businesses and people because they're not depending on public resources any longer. They're earning their own money. They earn their own money. Mm -hmm. It's a real economic impact for the entire community sure. when people get off of their disability, you know, Social Security benefits and actually are now earning money. Yeah. So we're saving the government money and they're putting more money back into our community by well, buying things. And that's right. Using their and I'm, I'm sure working those jobs, they got to file tax returns. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> they got to pay taxes. Oh, yes, sir. So uh, they're, they're, they're playing every aspect of the game. Yes, sir. And then they yeah, take those earnings and reinvest back into the community. They're yeah, buying right. things. They're going places. They're doing the things that they enjoy. So it, it just there's a positive economic impact. Sure, no question about it. Yes, sir. And they, with them earning their own money, they go out. They spend that money. They got to pay sales tax. They got to pay for this, pay for that. Yes, sir. It contributes to the economy. 
So they're not a couch. They are no longer a couch potato. That's right. <laughs> That's right. They're earning it. That's right. Um, work readiness training, career counseling. I'm just reading mm -hmm. um, some of the, the great aspects of the organization when it comes to community employment. Uh, assessments. Tell me about that. Okay. Well, the assessment process is that we kind of talked about earlier, making sure that we know what that person's skill sets are, what they have to offer and contribute to an employer. We also do a vocational assessment just to make sure we have an understanding of their work skills, what they bring to the table. And we do an employment profile, which makes sure that we know exactly the attributes that they have, exactly the skills they're going to bring. So when we go out to that employer, we say, we don't just have a person, we have the person for your company. We have the person that's going to be a perfect fit for your business and that's an appealing process to business owners they want to make sure that they know they're getting the right people so that assessment process is very important it is, and we're often looking for employers who are open to us actually coming in to their business to do some of these assessments, because the best assessment we can get is actually on the job for these individuals. Mm -hmm. So if they say, I want to work at Crystal, um, then we will take them actually to Crystal and let them try out the job for a few hours mm -hmm. to actually see if they can do it, if it would be a good match, mm -hmm. if they have the right skills, and a lot of times that is a really great first chance for the employer to get to see that individual as well without any kind of commitment just to see if they can do the job and if it seems like a good fit and that's uh, uh, one of our uh, best things we have in our pocket that we use all the time with individuals because you can't get a really good feeling just from a paper test mm -hmm. or, or assessment that you do with somebody to, to see if that's going to be a good match. Get out there and do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and we've had times where we took a person out for an assessment and they were so good at what they were asked to do that the employee said, okay, they're hired. Offer they're the hired. job right yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've seen how we need to see they're hired mm -hmm. and that's just a great opportunity for all of us. And you know, I would think, you know, I, I'm sure there are a lot of employees employers out there that probably watch this program now or looking at this program or whatever and they probably are unaware that you even exist but now they are yes sir and they see how they can save money because they don't have to get involved like you said earlier Stephanie they don't have to get involved in the whole process of training people and then maybe three months later two weeks later lose that person right they walk out the door they decide you know they're going elsewhere but it's altogether different <clears throat> when you're hiring a person at Crystal's or any other location, and that person wanted to work there in the first exactly place. Exactly right. That, that was that was their desire. That was their dream. Exactly right. Know? So you know that person that person's going to be there. How many times do you go to a fast food restaurant and realize the people really don't want to be there? You that's can right. tell that. That's you can right. tell that through their attitude. Excuse me, that's right. You're right. It about is that. not the attitude that our individuals have. They are grateful for the job that they have. They mm -hmm. love the company that they work for. Mm -hmm. They're happy to get up and go to work every day. They they absolutely love their jobs. Yeah. And they're really committed to whichever company gave them that that's shot. Right. That's right. And, and when you, you're you're finding the individual like that. They they have special places that they would really love to work. Mm -hmm. And then they get an opportunity to work. You, do you really think they're going to blow that? <laughs> right. Ooh, no way. Oh, they have passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, your job placement includes assistance with resume writing. Mm -hmm. Seven, you didn't mention that when you talked about the interview, the application, <laughs> job matching, but yeah. resume writing. Yes, sir. Yeah, a lot of our individuals, a lot of our individuals don't know how to write a resume, and they may not have a lot of work history or education to put on a resume, mm -hmm. so they're not really sure where to begin. So we have employment consultants that really sit down with them and can pull out things that they've done, such as volunteer jobs, mm -hmm. uh, working at their church daycare, mm -hmm. you know, on the weekends. Those are kind of things that you may not think are really relevant, but they are. That, you've gained sure. skills through those. Sure. So they really help pull those things out and can create a resume that will at least get us in the door yeah. you know, at an employer's place. Right. And, and that's what we need. We need a foot in the door. Yeah. And then we can bring in our person and show them yes, yeah. how crack, great they're going to do. You crack that door and I get my foot in there, I'll be in yes, there. Sir. Yep. Oh. <laughs> um, 
job coaching. That's what you were talking about early on. Yes. Sir. Even though they got the job, you still get involved in, in, in the in that process. But you want to make sure they stay there too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yes, sir. We have a job coach to go in on the very first day that a person gets a job to make sure they understand what's going on. They even go through the training with the people to make sure that they have a good, really deep knowledge of what the requirements may be so that they can help train this person on the job and they will not start to pull away until they are positive that the person has the skills and is meeting all the requirements. So job coaching is a vital part of what we do. And again, we can have a job coach that starts out, stays for a while, and then that person has those skill sets, but we might get a call saying, well, we want them to do this now, and we bring the job coach back in again to retrain. So it's an ongoing support system that doesn't go away. You know what, I, I, I'll be quite honest with you. These employers here in Memphis and the surrounding areas, there's a gold mine right there it serves, <laughs> and many of them just don't even know it. Yes, sir. You know, you, you don't have to, you know, run an ad in the paper, do, what, do this, do that. Just pick up the telephone, call serves, tell them what you need, and employers, they're going to give it to you. <laughs> yes, sir. As much as you want. Mm -hmm. You know, as many as you want. That's what this. That's what this search program is all about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I love it. Our clients are definitely not just the individuals we serve, but they're the employers that we're working with as well. Mm -hmm. So again, it's really about that match, about figuring out what the employer needs and what skills they need out of someone, and finding that really good match. We're not, you know, we're not asking for charity from employers. Right. No. We, we we have individuals that are skilled and that can come in and help you to to better your business. That's great. Right. That's just. I know that's great. <laughs> We're going to have to come back and do this another time. Yes, sir. This, is, this is great. And, you know, you guys are great. Thank you, sir. Because uh, every individual that has a job like the, the two of you have can do what you do. Working, working with those who don't quite have the, the way to move around like you and I do, but you've given up your time, your talents, your patience to make sure that their dreams come true. And, and that's great, it really is. So on that note, we're gonna to have to say goodbye to Stephanie Potter, Director of Serves Community Employment Services, and Troy Allen, Director of Community Based Day Services, and Remember Serves. Thanks everybody. I'm Patrick Kennedy. When our troops return from their tours of duty, the homecoming isn't always a happy one. Many of these brave men and women come home with invisible wounds from the psychological stress of deployment. Last year, more of our military members died by suicide than from combat. Anyone can experience stress after a traumatic event, and having this kind of reaction has nothing to do with personal weakness. That's why it's so important for veterans to hear from their families that seeking help for mental health is a sign of strength. And it's up to all of us as members of the American family to embrace our veterans so they stop suffering in silence. If you think a loved one is struggling from a mental illness, talk to them. Help them get the treatment they need. Remember, mental illness is an issue of chemistry, not character. Learn how you can be an advocate for change at psychiatry.org slash mental health. A public service message from the American Psychiatric Association.